the research process. So I'm into gardening. And earlier this spring, I was talking to my buddy Tom. I'm like, hey Tom, how your seeds doing? And Tom says, oh, they're doing pretty good. Check it out. And he shows me a picture and I'm like, dude, your seeds are twice as big as mine. What the heck? So that was my research question. Why had Tom's seeds grown bigger than mine? I started thinking about it and I realized the only difference between the way he was doing it and the way I was doing it was the container. He used plastic trays and I use what are called soil blocks. Long story short, a soil block is just compressed soil. There is no container. The soil block compresses it enough that it stays together. The soil is the container. And I had read online that soil blocks are supposed to be better for the seeds, but here we are, and my seeds aren't doing as good as Tom's. So I started thinking about it. I was like, well, maybe when you compress the soil, it depletes the seed of oxygen. So I set out to answer a question. Does a soil block make it harder for a seed to grow? So then I read articles online to see if anybody else had actually tested this empirically. Nope, just lots of theories and testimonials. All pseudoscience. So what did I do? I planted 80 lettuce seeds. 40 seeds in soil blocks and 40 seeds in containers. Two weeks later, I measured the growth of each. This story follows the general model of research. And here is a handy dandy graphic from your book. But it's missing one key element. Replication! If you can't tell, I'm pretty big on replication. We begin with an observation which invites a research question. We then review the literature to see if others have already investigated this. Then we conduct an empirical study, in my case, planting the seeds. Then we measure the outcome and analyze the data. Then we make tentative conclusions. Then we replicate. And throughout the process, we might find other questions. Like, if it wasn't the soil block, what the heck was it? Now for some definitions. Theory. A theory is an explanation for a phenomena. In my case, the phenomena was the smaller plants that I observed relative to Tom. And the explanation or the theory was that the compression of soil depletes the plants of oxygen. Definition number two, hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction based on the theory. And you know, in high school, we were taught that a hypothesis is an educated guess. Well, that's actually not true. It ain't no guess, people, it's a prediction. And it's based on the theory. Remember that. In my case, I predict that the seeds in the soil blocks will grow shorter because they're deprived of oxygen. And why do I predict that? Because my theory or explanation suggests that it should happen. Three, a critical experiment. We'll talk more later in the semester about what experiments are. In short, a critical experiment is a study designed to give clear answers to whether a theory is supported or refuted. In my case, either the seeds will grow taller which would support my theory, or they will not, which refutes my theory. So how do you know whether a hypothesis is good or not? First, hypotheses stem from theory. If my theory says that soil blocks deplete oxygen, my hypothesis should not be that my lettuce seeds will grow tomatoes. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't stem from my theory, nor would it make sense to hypothesize that more light means more growth. Because again, my theory states that it's a lack of oxygen, not light that caused the difference. Another characteristic of good hypotheses is that the experiments themselves stem directly from the hypothesis. Theory leads to hypothesis, which leads to experiments. If my theory said soil blocks deplete oxygen, and my hypothesis said that seeds will grow less under a soil block, it doesn't make sense to do experiment with different light conditions. Cause that's not what my hypothesis is about, people. But sometimes somewhere that link is broken. So my theory is loose soil aerates the soil and allows more oxygen promoting plant growth. And finally, good hypotheses have great criteria for support. In this case, more growth means there's support for the hypothesis. Otherwise, it's not supported. And the results? I know you're dying to know what happened. Well, here's a graph. It really didn't seem to make any difference at all. What do I conclude? Not much, at least not much yet. Why? because I haven't replicated it yet. So with that, let's review our learning objectives so far. First, the general model of research. Basically, remember this graphic. Second, be able to define theory, hypothesis, and critical experiments. Three, the theory, hypothesis, and data link. Basically, your theory needs to lead to your hypothesis, and your hypothesis needs to lead to your experiment. There needs to be a continuous, coherent story in there. Next, characteristics of good hypotheses. 
which is basically just the last learning objective, that there is a link from theory to data. That's all. So with that, see you in the next video.